Welcome back to Bombastic Nation and Ting and Ting and Ting. I'm Mr. Giant and I'm back with some more vibes for you. Yes, I. And uh, somebody uh, told me, hey, Geography Now did Switzerland. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to get in here with my man and watch some Geography Now. Uh, this one is a Switzerland one. I'm excited. I'm excited. You know what I mean? I want to see this. You know what I mean? Thank you all for watching this with me. Let's go right on to this on YouTube and Sim Simba. All right, we have now reached Switzerland. Now, geez, neutrality, banks. Well, Switzerland didn't start off that way. It was basically a bunch of mountain folk that built an entire economy off of what are essentially European ninjas. And now it goes down, they have a bunch of bugs that they can hide in in case of nuclear war happens. But we'll get into that later. In the meantime, here is the intro song. <laughs> Barbs, get your Geography Now merch at geographynow.com. It's not selling out if it's your brand. In any case, Switzerland, the crossroads of the Germanic and Latin worlds, known as the Confederation Helvetica, despite not actually being a confederation, named after the Helveti tribe, which were actually Celtic, hmm, we should hang out sometime, that were mostly wiped out and driven away by the Latins and Germanic peoples. Oh, well, okay. But anywho, so I actually promised my Swiss friend Herman that he could be in this episode with me. And I wanted to fly him out here to Los Angeles to co-host. Unfortunately, at the time of filming this episode, the U.S. had restrictions on Europeans entering our country, and the actual date of acceptance for Europeans to enter would take way too long. So I decided, if I can't fly him out here, why don't I just fly out there and make a makeshift Geography Now studio set and have him in the episode? Here I go! Man, I envy you there, Bart. Just flying off to Switzerland like that. Guys, say hi to Mr. Herman. Hello, nice to meet you. Uh, Switzerland. Yeah. Again, I'm super short, so I gotta step on a box. What does it mean to you, Herman, to be Swiss? That, of course, the whole cheese and chocolate thing. For me, to be honest, we are quite grateful that uh, we live in this nice country, which is just uh, safe stable and it has been like this for a long time by the way guys uh this is the guy that was in my heritage trip video uh this is my swiss go-to guy you're an expert on switzerland right sure all right and with that let's move on let's find switzerland on the map shall we so switzerland is kind of a unique place in europe mostly because of the way how it was formed you see most countries had a king but switzerland didn't it was just a bunch of annoyed mountain folk who didn't want to align with any king and became independent now there's a lot of disagreement on exactly how switzerland was formed some people say maybe it was the medieval times some people say it was the more modern napoleonic wars so technically the earliest form of switzerland was after the rüdlich Ur, Ulrich, Ritz, and Unterwalden agreed to have an alliance it was basically like hey schmitz how are <coughs> you doing hey man this army just came in and attacked me for no reason oh, yeah. it true are we talking about the right. armies coming through without our permission yes oh, oh my god so, so annoying you know what we should do we should form a um a confederation. confederation. A confederation. Let's do it. Like, let's form a confederation. Wow. Together. Then later it was like, hey, can, can we join, please? Can I join There's, too? Just like. I don't speak the language, but we'd like to join. This gives me an idea. Maybe I should expand. The point is, Switzerland started to grow. And today you have the Switzerland you see before you locked away safely in the Alps. Let's go to the map now, shall we? First of all, Switzerland is a landlocked nation located at the convergent point of Western, Central, and Southern Europe, surrounded by five countries. Remember, don't forget little Liechtenstein. The country is a federal republic made up of 26 cantons, each with their own unique flag and coat of arms. However, keep in mind, six of these cantons are considered traditional half cantons, which means they are grouped into three pairs that share a councillor in their government. In order to maintain a somewhat decentralized government system that keeps cantons happy, technically Switzerland has no official capital, as stated by their constitution, but Bern is yeah, did not know de facto that. capital as it holds the House of Parliament and other federal authorities. The country's largest city, though, would be Zurich, located in the northeastern part of the country. It also hosts the largest and busiest airport, Zurich International. And from there, the next largest cities are Geneva and Basel, which also carry respectively the second and third busiest airports as well. In fact, about 75% of the population actually lives in the North Swiss Plateau, even though it only makes up about 30% of the land surface. Speaking of which, the only ambiguous dispute they have is with Germany and Austria over the Bodensee or Lake Constance. Three countries have never formally established borders and they kind of just don't say anything. 
In any case, Switzerland was <coughs> to other unique border anomalies. For one, by Schaffhausen, Switzerland tried to grab as much land as they could north of the Rhine River, leaving a unique layout of territory grabs that jut into Germany, and it even leaves one exclave of Germany entirely within Switzerland, Lusingen am Hochrein. Head down south to the Ticino Canton, and you have the Campione d'Italia, which is basically one big casino resort. It is an exclave of Italy completely engulfed within Switzerland, only about a half mile or less than one kilometer over a hill away from Italy. Finally, if you go up to Basel, you have some very weird skinny land salience that jut into France for no logical reason, like this one by the town of Briti, which at its narrowest choke point is less than 230 feet or 70 meters wide. Transport in Switzerland is top notch though. Well paved highway. I wonder what the people who live in those areas, especially that last one, Seems like a little lasso type thing into the, that other country. Was that France? Yeah, I think he said France. I wonder if they speak French there, or is it a combination of French, German, or Swiss, or Swiss, whatever they speak there. That'd be an interesting place to visit, just to see the, how the culture is there. That, 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 that definitely would be interesting. Tunnels and train networks connect every region of Switzerland. The biggest and most proud engineering project that the country has ever gone through, though, would probably be the Gotthard Base Tunnel. It is the longest rail tunnel and deepest traffic tunnel in the world, effectively cutting through the Alps, connecting the canton of Uri with Ticino. This tunnel has heavily bolstered the efficiency of Switzerland's freight and passenger transport, as about 11,000 people and about 70,000 tons of cargo are able to swiftly pass by daily. Fun fact because of Herman, me and my mom actually got to go see Liechtenstein. He drove us all the way from Zurich all the way through Liechtenstein in Austria and we ended up in Lindau, Germany where we met the worst waiter ever at a casino restaurant. I remember this guy was horrible. In Switzerland, public transport is really good. You can get almost <coughs> by train. That's the Jungfrau which brings you above 3,500 meters. But that's kind of like more of a touristy thing. Yeah, that's a true. I've never been there. Speaking of trains, you said something about like they donate your ones, right? Yeah, actually trains. The trains of Zurich are going to Ukraine, and the trains from Basel are going to um, Basel. The interesting thing is that historically, some places that are actually outside of modern-day Switzerland used to be protectorates or associates of Switzerland. They are Mulhouse, which lies in today's France, Rottweil in Germany, Valtellina and Bormio, which today lie in Italy. Even though the Austrian state of Vorarlberg once voted to become part of Switzerland in World War One, we decided to better not take them in. You rejected them! Now, another thing about Switzerland you have to understand is that they kind of have like two imaginary lines based off of the cultural regions. You can explain. What are they, Herman? The Groben, separating the French-speaking part of Switzerland from the German, and then there's the Polenta Groben, which is between the German part and the South, which speaks Italian. Basically, one side drinks beer, the other wine. Due to their history of constantly being invaded or outside forces threatening or just generally bothering them, the Swiss have developed a culture of, let's just kind of call it heavy defensive caution. We are neutral, but we still uh, are prepared to defend ourselves to make it as expensive as possible for anybody to attack us. This is why, should the event ever occur, the country is loaded with copious amounts of bunker. See, you see, that's what I'm talking about. I take it they have a military, but it's mainly for defense than it is for offense. But they still had a history of taking territory. But being landlocked, that leave them open for easy attack. So, I guess the the mentality is to build a good defense because it could come from anywhere. I mean, you've got Italy, France, Germany, you've got all them countries around you. I'm not saying that they're going to attack Switzerland, but you never know, you know what I mean? So I could understand the emphasis on uh, defense. I guess it would be harder to attack a country unless you have a superior naval force from the sea. But then again, if you look at uh, Britain had the best navy in the world, attacked places and stuff like that. But usually it's like colonies and stuff. I mean, the same thing happened in the Falklands. They sent a heavy naval be a naval force down there, and uh, of course, look what happened. But then again, they were militarily superior. There's everywhere. Like, it's actually a law all living units have to have a bunker or something like that, right? Yeah. We have a lot of hidden 
bunkers and people hacking you would just see them, but they're nowhere on the map. There's no exact number on how many are built, but apparently they can protect the entire population plus more, right? I think. So the question is for how long, right? In any case, Switzerland has so many notable cool sites to see and visit. We actually filmed this part before I could audition anybody to do it, so uh, I'll just uh, fill this in with a voice dub voiceover. Here's Alex. Hey guys, I'm Alex. I'm from Geneva, Switzerland, or I'm currently in Mexico. Here's a few things you should absolutely check out if you haven't made it to Switzerland. Check out the Gédo Fountain, the Cathedral Saint Pierre, uh, Palais des which is home of the United Nations, and the Sun Hydroglider Castles. Check out the Chateau de Chillon, the Oberhofen, uh, Valais, and Tourbillon, uh, Chateau de Gruyère, uh, Bunhausen, which is basically a capital. Check out the Bear Park, uh, King der Fressenbrunnen statue, Lauterbrunnen that has over 70 waterfalls, uh, the Lake Lucerne has the Lion Monument and the Chapel Bridge with uh, the F-347 ski resorts covering it. Wait, 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 you, you, you went to so that real quick. Check out the Capital, check out the Bear Park, uh, King der Fressenbrunnen statue, Lauterbrunnen that has over 70 waterfalls, uh, the Lake Lucerne has the Lion Monument and the Chapel Bridge with the uh, yeah, Oh, that, that bridge is cool. I want to see that bridge. Uh, Aqua Park, Coneyland, Swiss Aqua Park, and the Geiger Museum, which is okay. Let's amazing. skip it. And I'm gonna look that bridge up. Rush, check out the mountain coasters, awesome. Oh, I want to do this, well but alas, I'm seven feet tall. In the world. But yeah, thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you, Alex. You're always going underground for whatever reason. Yeah, if you have a mountain in between two places, what are you gonna do? Which is actually the perfect transition into the next segment. Of course, you cannot talk about Switzerland without talking about the mountains and nature. Literally, the moment you say Switzerland, obviously images of like snow-capped mountains and valleys and cows with cowbells. And even the iconic Matterhorn probably comes up, although 12 people a year usually die on it. But yeah, it's still very beautiful. It's a challenge. <laughs> so let's go to the map and break down Switzerland's land makeup. Now, despite Switzerland being famous for the Alps and being the most mountainous country in Europe, the actual Alps only make up about 60% of the country. The remainder of the country only? is in <laughs> other geographic zones, the Swiss or Central Plateau, which is the lowest part of the country and where most of the agriculture and livestock raising is concentrated. Ooh. And the Jura Mountains in the northwest on the border with France. Of course, in the Alps, you can find Shocker, the tallest peak, Dufourspitze, just on the border with Italy. No, the famous incredibly difficult to climb Matterhorn just a few miles away is not the tallest peak. It just looks really cool. That's all. Just to skip away, you find the Alec Glacier, the largest glacier in the Alps, and it is a UNESCO heritage site. From the ice melt of the Alps, of course, you get the source of all the rivers that feed Switzerland, including the longest river, the Rhine, which shares borders with its neighbors. However, the longest river fully in Switzerland, not shared, would be the Are or Aar River. Of course, these rivers also feed into the world-renowned lakes of Switzerland, the largest one being Lake Geneva or Lac Leman, in which Switzerland was like very set on making sure they hooked around the end with Geneva and got most of it when splitting it with France. Nonetheless, the largest lake fully in Switzerland is Neuchâtel, not to be confused with Neuchâtel in Normandy, France, which is where the soft cheese comes from. Yeah, and those highlights don't even cover a fraction of all the cool nature stuff in, in Switzerland. You can hike, then at the end you arrive at the lake, is it like fresh enough for you to drink from or no? You could maybe, but the guy might have pee in it. beautiful, but when it comes to natural resources, we're actually not growing. Much of our economy is actually based on industry and services. To explain a little bit more Ooh. about the economy and industrial output, here's Vanilla to explain. All right, let's get to it. We all know high-end things like luxury Swiss watches and Swiss knives are made in Switzerland, which are, by the way, a multi-billion dollar industry. By the way, if you're looking for a backpack, Swiss gear is amazing. I had one of those backpacks for probably over a decade. Great stuff. Good backpacks, man. But the one industry that everyone takes focus on, even though it only makes up about 50% of their economy, is the Swiss banking system. Home to two world-renowned companies, UBS and Credit Swiss. Credit Swiss being founded by Alfred Escher. Look him up. The appeal is that Swiss banks offer the same amount of privacy and confidentiality. To explain more about the bank situation, here's Swiss geography Simon. Good team, it's an aunt. Hello, I am uh, Simon and I'm actually from Switzerland. What part of Switzerland? Bodensee. Wow! 
See, back in 1713, uh, Switzerland's great council decided they would outlaw the uh, financial disclosure to uh, Europe's financial elites. In addition, all forms of bribery were pretty much criminalized. Since 1934, it was uh, made criminal to disclose the identity of any account holders, as long as they didn't have any extreme credit. Charges. Even though the interest rates are really low, sometimes the rate is even negative, which means you have to pay to hold Swiss francs or to open an account. Nonetheless, our rate of investments are pretty high, like at 2.5%, due to the regular stability of the Swiss economy. Granted, there was some controversy, as there have been many lawsuits uh, brought against our beautiful banks, such as the 1996 Holocaust victim class action lawsuit, which claimed that Swiss banks knowingly concealed assets illegally acquired by the Nazis. Then again, in 2009, uh, the US uh, strong armed Switzerland into, you know, uh, disclosing uh, wealthy assets from 50,000 Americans. It worked, but now, you know, Swiss banks don't accept any Americans or even Swiss people who move to America or who make a vacation in Florida. If you'd like to open an account, just contact me on Instagram and it will be totally confidential. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much. Adieu, Mr. Oh, thanks, Simon. Yeah. With I was about to say, it's a good idea to keep people's money their private business but then unscrupulous characters could keep money in there and nobody would know man you just can't have a good thing because you know i would not like like if i'm really wealthy i would not like people to know how much i have because that puts a target on your back but i wonder why they did the laws like that back then you know, because he did say that they, 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 they passed a law, you know, saying that, uh, you know, you can't disclose the, 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 the bank account holder. And it's also ironic that they stopped taking Americans because, you know, they got forced to give out information about 50,000 American uh, uh, people that had the money in the bank there. I tell you, man, that government's going to get its piece of the share, you know, the little force of the countries. You give me your information. I want to know what my people are doing in your bank. But, you know, now you have those offshore banks in the, in the Caribbean and stuff like that doing similar stuff, I guess. Yeah, I guess they could still subpoena that and get it. But uh, correct me if I'm wrong, below. And below, also comment and tell me if you think that not disclosing the bank customers names and stuff is a good thing or a bad thing comment down below and let me know. tell me what you all think great banks comes great liability but of course Switzerland is more than just banks they have thriving pharmaceutical tech and tourism sectors the palette is being thriving is that a swiss bottle too that'd be pretty cool if it was they take their agriculture industry very seriously Government actually subsidizes 70% of farms. I mean, how can you say no to the wonderful dairy provided by Swiss cows? To explain more about the animal situation here in Gary Harbor. Hey guys, uh, Caleb's actually busy. He couldn't do the segment, but uh, we got Ian. So uh, you're going to be Gary Harbor today. You're probably going to mess it up, but I don't care. Yay. I will screw it up for sure. Switzerland, being the alpine nation it is, provides quite the habitat for all kinds of strange species. The country has 18 official nature parks. Now, in these mountains, you have quite a many of mountain adapted undulates. Much noted are the ibex and the chamois. Thanks to their two toed hooves, these little guys latch on to the narrowest of walls. Yeah, that's amazing. amazing. Are they brave or are they just stupid? I ask myself that a lot. Unfortunately, most of the predators, like the gray wolf and the Eurasian lynx, are incredibly rare. Brown bears were actually hunted to extinction in 1904. Now, one species of predator does thrive in Switzerland is the European asp. It's a viper, but it's well adapted to the high altitudes. And the bite is extremely painful. Now, unlike most countries, Switzerland doesn't have a national animal. But if you ask around, you might find out that the unofficial Swiss animal is the iconic Swiss cow. Even though they're not naturally from these here mountains. All right, well, that's it for me, fellas. This is terrible. I'm sorry, Hannah, I'm sorry. Thanks, Ian. Uh... Anyway, we discussed much of the industry, economy, and physical makeup. That means there's only one more part left. Boo! Now, I love doing this part, but I will gracefully step down to that natural space job and take over. Hello, we are Mara and Terrence, and today we are going to talk about Swiss food. We have to talk about cheese, of course. Thousands of varieties of them. You probably also know the popular dishes, fondue and blocklet, rösti, which is like a hash brown, alpha magrona, Zürichschnanzlitz, Venom Doctor, 
Got that, Noah? Switzerland is so expensive. We actually like to go shopping in other countries just because it's cheaper. There are some laws what you can bring back, like uh, one kilogram of meat, five liters of wine, or one liter of strong liquor, and one kilogram of butter. They actually check at the border when you drive through. Yes. But I mean, you guys do. Wow. Have you, you're well known for your cheese and chocolate. You put it on everything. You bake something in the oven, put some cheese on it. You're having sushi, why not put some chocolate? Yeah, food always brings people together. Except for that one time in Lindau with that. Seriously, four years later and you're still traumatized. Yes, I'm still pissed off. Anyway, let's move on. Switzerland, as we already explained, has a lot of cantons. And there's actually kind of a word you guys have in Switzerland. Explain, Herman. It's Eidgenossenschaft. What does it mean? An old alliance came along and formed a nation. Except for Ticino, which we conquered. Despite the fact that each of the region kind of has their own canton cultural difference, at the end of the day, they are all Swiss. Here's how you break down the populace. First of all, the country has about 8.5 million people and often ranks in the top three global competitive markets and human development index scores on Earth. And yeah. generally speaking, things get a little complicated because Swiss censuses only take in data from factors like citizenship and place of birth. So the specific details can be a little vague, but in the broadest sense, it will say that about 75% of the country are Swiss nationals, and the remaining 25% are resident foreigners, one of the highest proportions in the developed world. From here, things get a little overlappy, because within both groups, everything breaks down linguistically as well. Often, Switzerland will refer to their linguistic groups for data rather than ethnic, in which case about 63% of the country are primarily German-speaking Swiss, 23% are primarily French-speaking, and somewhere around 8-9% to are primarily Italian-speaking. Finally, less than 1% are Romansh speaking. Keep in mind, this data can apply to anyone from anywhere that claims these languages as primaries, regardless of their ethnic background. What we do know, though, is that of the 25% foreign residents, about 64% of them are from the EU or EFTA countries, the largest being Italians, followed by Germans, and Portuguese and French. There's a sizable Kosovar, Albanian community, and of the Asian community, Sri Lankans, mostly of Tamil descent, make up the largest demographic. The Swiss French yeah. are on the right side of the room. And you guys use the J plug outlet, which I hate because there's like an inward diamond shaped divot and my C plug adapters don't fit. Why do you, you guys are trying to do everything to be different from the rest of Europe. It's so weird. Well, sometimes you introduce a standard before the rest of Europe and then it's too late. In Switzerland, the dishwashers used to be 55 centimeters and then Europe introduced a new standard of 60 centimeters. But the problem is it costs more to manufacture and special size. So our dishwashers cost three times as much. Yay! Anyway, Switzerland has four official languages, Swiss German, Swiss French, Swiss Italian, and Romansh. Even though less than 1% of the country speaks it, it's still an official language. It's actually pretty closely related to vulgar Latin, which was spoken in the Roman Empire, and uh, it's also a cousin of Romanian. So most of us know three languages somehow. What is the difference between Swiss German and Hochdeutsch spoken in Germany? So Swiss German is uh, a very strong dialect. We have uh, dropped, for example, the simple past tense, and uh, the Germans don't really understand. Don't even get started with French Swiss as well, although I do like how they use the nanons and uh, huitons and uh, septons, captons and capons, uh, and don't even get started with Ticino Italian. In fact, you know what? Matteo can explain it. Here you go. This guy can explain. So, Ticino Swiss sounds very much like uh, Northern uh, Lombardy. You can't tell if it's a Swiss or not, but just with the pronunciation. But Man, there's a lot of information uh, here. Word, they really got the power. Mark, for example, they say nothing instead of mobile phone, or they say leave instead of ashen sorry for saying leave. Except for this, it's just usual northern Italian uh, speak. Anyway, regardless of the linguistic background, they are not French, Swiss, or German, Swiss, or Italian. They're all just Swiss. For what's worth, though, there's so much backstory with Switzerland. For example, the Habsburg family, which ruled the Austro-Hungarian Empire for centuries, was from Habsburg in 
Argyle, Switzerland. But they lost with their knight against the Swiss peasants in the Battle of Morgarten. See, this is kind of the interesting contrast to the otherwise neutral, peaceful image of Switzerland comes in. The brutal fighting skill of the Swiss was so well renowned throughout Europe that it actually kind of became like their biggest export. All the rulers in Europe uh, got Swiss mercenaries, and in the end, it might be a French king fighting an Italian army, and in the end, it's Swiss fighting Swiss. That's so weird. And then they actually decided to stop having offensive war and introduce this neutrality. Nonetheless, you know, their neutrality has always been kind of pressured throughout the years and it's been kind of pushed. Uh, explain a little bit more for me. In neutrality, you also have to treat both sides of the war similar. For example, you could not trade with any of them, but we didn't do that because we didn't want to get invaded by Germany. So we traded with Germany, we traded some with the Allies. In the historic context of being surrounded by the Axis powers, yeah. well, you had to, to stay neutral. You have to do what you have to do. How do you deal with all this pressure, trying to be neutral when the whole world is not neutral and you're surrounded by everybody? It's a tough question. But for what it's worth, Switzerland has known that neutrality has always kind of come at a cost. And this is one of the reasons why Switzerland is a conscription country. You go to military after your machine once for half a year, and then every year, a couple of weeks, three or four, until you're 30 or 31. There's a disclaimer though, there are some exceptions. The Swiss military has some quotas of how many people they want. If you have some health issues, you don't have to go to the military, but you will be paying 3% of your salary to the army. And if you have ethical reasons not to go, you can also fill out the form, apply to not go to the military, but you will have to take one and a half times as much time in something called civil service, maybe, yeah. where you do some, some projects for the good of the country. So at the end of the day, somehow you have to serve. You know, yeah, I kind of like that. You know what I mean? That way everybody's contributing to the, 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 the country itself. That's a pretty nice idea, though. You know what I mean? Going to the military, if you can do that, or you don't want to do that for some kind of whatever reason, do some uh, community work. That's a good way to get people involved in, the, in, the, in, in, in fixing things or making sure things stay fair, you know what I mean? That's a, that's a pretty decent idea there. I like that. Technically, Switzerland has one of the highest gun ownership populations <coughs> in the world. This all kind of plays into their unique system of government. It's often said that Switzerland is in an eternal election campaign. So we vote three to four times a year, and we also vote uh, regional for people to get into the National Council. So it's kind of like Switzerland focuses more on policies rather than politicians. Would you say a little bit of both? A little bit of both. But it's like you're very involved in everything. Yes. You're involved, and if we don't like something, there will be a referendum. But in Switzerland, it's relatively easy. Yeah. Some cantons uh, have different voting systems, like uh, voting publicly by raising a hand or some weird family sort. The head of state of Switzerland, actually, though, is the federal council. And one of them is the president, but it doesn't really matter because it changes every year, and he's just one among equals. Fun fact, Switzerland can actually deny citizenship to anybody who wants to apply for it. In fact, in 2010, there was one lady who was denied because her neighbors said she was annoying. There's a lot of those stories, like somebody not knowing where the baker is in the village because she shops in a big store. No passport for you. In regards to religion, like most countries in Europe, most of the people will at least culturally identify with Christianity, and in Switzerland, the case is mostly with Catholicism or Protestantism. It used to be very important. My grandma told me that her parents would not have accepted her bringing home the Catholic. But nowadays, um, you know, now, of course, this is one source that played a role in many of the regional differences throughout Switzerland. And they also kind of have like a healthy level of regional competition. And with that, let's move on to the sports part. So, sports in Switzerland go hand in hand, even on the corporate side. In fact, because of the tax laws, many European and international sports federations hold their headquarters in Switzerland. Domestically though, Switzerland has some sports that they actually invented, such as Spangen, which is played in sawdust, and the contenders wear burlap shorts. It's, also <laughs> it's a team sport. It's kind of like a mix between golf and baseball. In any case, when you live in a country with big snowy mountains, you're gonna get an emphasis on, this is, I know, a total shocker on winter sports. Skiing and mountaineering are pretty much taught from adolescence. Switzerland also invented competitive sledding. They invented the first bobsled and bobsled track in St. Moritz. Switzerland has done pretty well considering their size in both the Summer and Winter Olympics. 
Alpine skiing being their strongest event with 22 gold medals. On another note, auto racing was actually banned in Switzerland. They had a huge crash in 1955 that stopped it all. But the government made a little loophole exception for electric racing. And finally, we cannot end this segment without mentioning the most popular athlete. I know him, Roger Federer. He's part of the big three. 20 Grand Slam singles title winner, 103 ATP singles titles, two-time Olympic medalist. He has streets named after him, coins with his face. He's a model for Rolex and numerous brands. There's a lot of babies out there named after him, for sure. I once got a trophy for potato sack racing, and it was a big deal. Like, my mom was proud of me. And I do not know how to end my segment, so... Um... Thank you, Art. Yeah, the Swiss people have shown that even though they're a small country, they a violent have bunch, ain't they? competitive side. And we have this thing called Kantonigast, where each canton really has their own rules and does their own thing. To explain a little bit more about the culture and how things kind of go out in that way for Switzerland, here's Random Hannah with culture stuff. Random Hannah. And remember, you can get a Random Hannah shirt at geographynow.com. The culture of Switzerland cannot be easily summarized as a nation. That's because it breaks down to each canton having its distinct identity. There are lots of stereotypes for them, but here are some that you guys told us. Argao is known for having bad drivers. Lele has the most incomprehensible accents, while Graubünden has the most beautiful one. Glaus doesn't exist, Zurich has a superiority complex, and Geneva is just the French version of Zurich. Appenzell is known for hippies and all Funny enough, Inner Offenzell didn't give women the right to vote until 1991, and the country as a whole until 1970. In fact, Switzerland is known for having many interesting laws. For example, if you live in an apartment, you are not allowed to make distracting noises after 10 p.m. You're not allowed to cut your grass, hang your laundry, or do noisy chores. Wait, 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 wait. Did, they say flush, did she say flush in the toilet? Ah, sorry about that. I was trying to uh, to get to that uh, that law there. I could have sworn. You are not allowed to make So what, what? What? After ten p.m., <laughs> no toilet flushing, no laundry, no showing. Well, of course, parties. That should that should be a law everywhere in the world, unless notified neighbors in advance man so if you have to go to the bathroom i guess you don't flush until the next morning and if you had an accident you can't show and clean up wow that's crazy tracking noises after 10 p.m you're not allowed to cut your grass hang your laundry or do noisy chores on sunday the swiss really seem to value their silence the swiss are known for the many discoveries and inventions as well such as Cellophane and aluminum foil, Velcro, the vegetable peeler, the discovery of nucleic acid and DNA, and they were co-creators of the World Wide Web. Notable contemporary icons of Swiss culture include figures like Globi, Papa Mole, Shellen Orsley, and the most famous one worldwide, Heidi. They are notable for the visual arts in every field. You can find it in everything like Basel, with its 13th century Romanesque architecture, to the early 20th century Dada movement, even Dada. the font and its variants originated in Switzerland. It's one of the preferred fonts that we use on Geography Now. Speaking of the arts, one way to learn about Switzerland is through its film. And if you want to learn more about Switzerland's film, follow my channel, Filmography Now. In any case, each canton in Switzerland has its own festivals and celebrations. You have everything from the Brossler Fasna, where people involved in mass and Rocafetti, to Umstunenfest, held every 12 years in the town of Interlaken, where men compete to win massive boulders. There's too many festivals, we can't go through them all. Partially because we have to move on, which means you know what's coming next. The Florida man himself. Key. We need another hurricane. What's up everybody? Keith here. So today I decided to wear my bathrobe because, you know, you gotta live life comfortable. By the way guys, you can buy a Keith shirt. Look at that design. I designed it myself. Okay, so you guys think you know Swiss music and all that stuff. You probably think of, you know, yodeling cowbells. That's a good start, but let's go a little further. Many experts will agree that European alpine yodeling had its roots in Switzerland dating back to the early 1500s. The technique was used by herdsmen trying to call their livestock or communicating far distances between 
villages in the mountains. Many will say that the traditional national dance music of Switzerland, though, is Lander. It uses a 3-4 time signature, quarter note gets every single beat, whatever. This style was actually adopted by many classical composers like Beethoven, uh, Schubert. Uh, they kind of just, you know, took it and ran with it. Okay, now let's fast forward a couple hundred years. They actually won the very first Eurovision Song Contest. Fun fact, 30 years later, they would actually win again, but with Celine Dion, even though she's Canadian. And for some reason, Tina Turner is a citizen. <laughs> it has nothing to do with banks and money. <laughs> anyway, there are tons of music festivals like Street Parade Festivals, the Montreux Jazz Festival, which has had such artists as Pat Metheny, Steve Morris Band. I hope to go there at some point, Goldmine. There's even a statue of Freddie Mercury as Queen recorded many of their top hits in the studio over there. All right, we don't have time to talk about the entire evolution of the 20th century and the 21st century of Swiss musicians and stuff like that. But, however, what I will say is that if you like heavy metal bands, you should check out Kilted which is a great metal band. I hope you enjoyed my segment today. Stay Keith, everybody. Thank you, Keith. So something important about Switzerland is how they interact with the rest of the world. Which brings us to the last segment, The Friend Zone. Oh! We have managed to actually touch a bullet and stay neutral throughout the last century, which was a quite difficult thing to achieve. I mean, they're so neutral that even North Korea joined the UN for them. Although you guys did host the European no, team. We'll host anything with diplomacy. Hosted? Right. We'll also pay for it, but we don't join. Here's how they played out the diplomacy game. In respect to their constitution and overall global reputation, Switzerland's foreign policy is to traditionally avoid alliances and work for humanitarian efforts that strive for world peace and prosperity. This is partially why they host more international organizations than any other country in the world, most heavily concentrated in Geneva. Nonetheless, with their intense history and background, there are some countries that Switzerland has to admit they have quite a closer link to, if at the very least culturally. No one likes to make fun of Germans more than the Swiss, but in reality these two are so heavily tied in, especially with the body in Württemberg state that borders Switzerland. The area around the town of Rottweil was part of the old Swiss confederacy that was lost during the Napoleonic Wars, and today the town has an agreement of friendship with Switzerland. Overall, South Swabian Germans and German-speaking Swiss generally understand and get each other way better than, say, a Berlin or German. In that regard, Austria has traditionally been one of their biggest rivals in things like sports and outclassing each other with things like classical music, architecture, and general welfare. They both admire each other's systems of operation and many Swiss will say that Austrians probably get them way better than the Germans. Otherwise, France pretty much has the oldest diplomatic exchange when they signed the Treaty of Perpetual Peace in 1516, and the first Swiss ambassador abroad the Treaty of Perpetual in Peace. In Eight. Today, France hosts more Swiss people in diaspora than any other country in the world at nearly a quarter million, and they appreciate each other's, shall we say, bougie standards. On the other hand, Italians, mostly Lombards, have been rapidly moving into Switzerland, mostly in the Ticino canton, and are really taking advantage of that Italian-speaking official status. The Vatican City to this day still hires Swiss guards to stand at the palace, a tradition that has been going on since 1506, one of the oldest military units continuously in operation in the world. They still dress in traditional Renaissance uniforms and are actually trained in combat and small arms. It's not just for show. When it comes to their best friends, though, most Swiss will tell you, oh, we're neutral. We can't say we have a best friend. Aww. But after you get them a little tipsy and ask them one more time, they might make a Freudian slip and say, Little Liechtenstein. Switzerland and Little Liechtenstein go hand in hand. They are irrefutably inseparable. Liechtenstein is basically Switzerland's adorable little baby sibling about 200 years younger. They not only share currencies and speak almost the exact same German dialect, Dialect, they have a customs union, open borders, and the same stance on armed neutrality. But Switzerland also agrees to protect them if anything happens, represent them in any international treaty negotiations or abroad if they are unable to. And even when Switzerland makes mistakes and does things like accidentally firing an artillery shell at a ski resort in 1968, or accidentally invades them because the soldiers couldn't read maps, Liechtenstein is just happy to see them and offers them drinks upon arrival. All right, and in conclusion, Herman, take it away, you're the Swiss guy. I'm out. Switzerland is a beautiful country where it's really nice to live and enjoy a nice and peaceful life or have a nice vacation if you bring the necessary cash. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much. Thank you, Herman. You did say it was expensive. It was so fun filming with you. I can't believe I flew out here to just see you. Stay tuned. Syria is coming up next. Uh, Syria. I might have to look that one up. Uh, but man, <laughs> Switzerland, there's, there's just so much, so much to see there. And uh, it looks like there's so many 
different cultures in the con cantons they call it <laughs> could take a long time to go through all that culture and, and, and all of that I watched festivals man I love festivals <sighs> If I keep bucket listing, I'll be I'll be, have to uh, ghost some of them places. When I say that, I mean after I die, if go over there as a ghost or something. <laughs> but uh, the food looks good. Everything looks pretty good. Yeah. Anyway, thank you guys for watching this with me. Uh, leave a link in the description for this video so you all can go check it out without me stopping it, you know, and talking all the time. But this was quite interesting, and I like how they explained the neutrality vibe. You know what I mean? Uh, the thing that really impresses me is the they're, they're about self-defense and I don't know it might change because they're in the past they they, they had conquered places but it seems like the self-defense is mainly defending themselves on their soil and not saying look over there he's gonna do this to me let me go boom boom but anyway man thank you all again for watching this with me y'all take care of each other all right cool runnings